Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to go through the lesson on multiplication and division properties, and then we're also going to handle one practice problem. So we're combining the lesson and the practice. All right, multiplication and division properties. Before we talked about addition and subtraction properties with respect to segments and angles, and now we're going to talk about multiplication and division properties with respect to segments and angles. So theorem 14, if segments or angles are congruent, then their like multiples are congruent. So if I have AB, which bisects FAU, I know that FAB, angle FAB, and BAU are congruent. And then if I have ray ON, which bisects WOD, then I know that WON and NOD are also congruent. So if it's given that angle FAB is congruent to angle WON, so I say angle FAB, I'm sorry, WON, that's right, angle FAB is congruent to angle WON, then I know that the entire angle FAU, which is a doubling of this particular angle, is going to be congruent to the doubling of WON, which would be WOD. Now this, this also holds for any multiple, so it doesn't have to be just two or doubling. It can be tripling or quadrupling or quintupling. And this holds for both segments and angles. For theorem 15, we say if segments or angles are congruent, then their like divisions are congruent. So in the prior slide, we talked about like multiples. In this case, we're talking about like divisions. And again, it holds true as well. We can cut uh, each of the segments into half or thirds or quarters. It doesn't matter. All we have to say is that their like divisions are congruent. So if I know that HE is congruent to LU, so I say HE, HE is congruent to, excuse me, LO, then I know that if I take half of HE and half of LO, that those halves are also going to be congruent. So I can say now that HP would be congruent to LQ. So again, HP, which is half of HE, congruent to LQ. All right, so let's apply that to a practice problem. Practice problem says point T is located on the graph so that line RT is perpendicular to the x-axis and 3 is less than RT is less than 5. All right, so what does that look like? So point T is located on the graph so that RT is perpendicular to the x-axis and RT is between 3 and 5. We're also given that point R, the location of point R, is negative 5, 1. So if I know that RT is perpendicular to the x-axis, then I know that the line that runs through R is going to be a vertical line. And that vertical line runs right through the x-axis. So I know T is going to lie somewhere on this vertical line. Well, what do I know about the x-coordinate for RT, if RT is a vertical line that is perpendicular to the x-axis. Well, I know that X, in this case, never changes. Regardless of what happens to Y, X is always going to be negative 5. So I know right away that X is equal to negative 5. So that's one of the restrictions. So we're trying to find the restrictions on the coordinates of T. So X must equal negative 5. Then I'm also told that RT is between 3 and 5 units. So all I need to do now is count up 3 to 5 units from point 1 and then down 3 to 5 units from again negative 1 or negative 5, 1. So as I count up I know that uh, the y value has to be 1 plus 3 between 1 plus 3 and 1 plus 5 or between 4 and 6. So the x coordinate is going to be negative 5 and then the y coordinate will be between 4 and 6. 
Now moving downwards, I do the same thing. I count three units, three to five units down to t. So I know that t would be either one minus three or one minus five in between those two points. So one minus three is negative two. So again, I have my x-coordinate, which has to be negative five. One minus three gives me negative two, and then that's gonna be one minus five or negative four. So the restrictions are that the coordinates have to be either negative five with a y-coordinate between four and six, or negative five with a y-coordinate between negative two and negative four.